hey everyone. You might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 39, I believe, of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. This week, we are going to kick it old school with just Eric and Nate. It almost happened last week. Again, on a recording you guys will never see or hear. <laughs> uh, but we're back, and we're recording a little earlier in this week, so I decided to mix the topics up just a little bit since we're going to be about a day and a half or so behind our usual topics. And this is also kind of a special week because the Friday, uh, before you guys hear this, Doom came out on Switch. And then literally this Tuesday, uh, L.A. Noir comes out, and I think on Friday Skyrim comes out. Also on Tuesday is Rocket League, so it's kind of like a huge week yeah, of releases uh, from when our last podcast was to this one of third party games. And we actually have a topic on third That's parties, awesome. so it's going to be fun. Yeah. But before we get into that, it is the season of the holidays. Yeah. Holidays. Holidays is amazing. Now, I realize that this, what we're about to talk about, might only apply to the United States. I don't really know what happens in other countries, because I'm not from those countries. Right. But as the holidays approach, that means it's sale season, and we have some Black Friday deals. Now, these ones come from Best Buy. Now, Best Buy. There, by the time you hear this podcast, there could be some other deals that have come out, uh, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, I might do a, a Black Friday slash Cyber Monday weekend roundup, like the week of it coming out. And because we record the podcast usually a few days early before we publish it, um, we I'm going to make that as a separate video from the podcast where I just kind of go over what I feel are some of the best deals on games for Switch and 3DS. Uh, over I mean, Heck, maybe there's some deals on some of their mobile games. Maybe Nintendo's going to knock five bucks off Super Mario okay. or something. We don't know. Never know. Nothing's been announced yet. So... Uh, but we're going to go over these Black Friday deals because they're, they're kind of interesting um, and they might have some, some, some conversations, uh, maybe about game pricing, maybe about uh, just some interesting stuff. So, Eric, I'm going to have you go over Best Buy's Switch list for the, the deals. What Switch we list. Okay. We got Minecraft, uh, Story Mode, the Complete Adventure for $14.99. It, was or it is originally $39.99. Uh, what the heck is this? The Sagi of Five complete. Oh, the Sagi of Five. That works. I have never actually seen that before in my life. So Yeah, I didn't either until it came to Switch. Okay. <laughs> it's at $19.99, uh, formerly or normally at $59.99. RBI Baseball 2017, $19.99, normally $29.99. The Lego Ninja Ninjago movie video game, $19.99, normally $59.99. Raymond Legends Definitive Edition. Nineteen ninety nine, normally forty nine ninety nine. Dragon Ball Xenoverse two, nineteen ninety nine, normally forty nine ninety nine. Lego Worlds, nineteen ninety nine, normally thirty nine ninety nine. Monopoly, nineteen ninety nine, normally thirty nine ninety nine. Various Switch games for twenty four ninety nine. Super Bomberman R, Sonic Forces one two Switch. Nice. Uh, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth uh, is at twenty nine ninety nine, normally thirty nine ninety nine. Puyo Puyo Tetris is $29.99, normally $39.99. FIFA 18, $29.99, normally $59.99. What? Sorry, keep going. I, I know, I'm, I could just say 30 and 60. No, 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 that's not why. Okay. Just keep going. Yeah, one more what, just because I'm reading it? No, no it's got nothing to do with it. Okay. Just, just read. And then Cars, dri Cars 3, Driven to Win, $29.99, normally $49.99. All right, so speak, we'll stop at Switch and then we'll get to 3DS. Are there any of these 3DS deals that stand out to you in any sort of way? Even if it's not a game you're going to buy, just something that shocks you. Uh, I mean, the one that I probably would buy 
or there's probably two that I would possibly think about buying RBI Baseball and uh, Lego Worlds, even though I'm not a big fan of the whole dropping things onto something to make it a playable character, because then, good God, you have to spend ungodly amounts of money. But it does look like a decent game, at least Lego Worlds does. So those two, to me, are the ones that I would definitely think of, think about. Sure. Um... Well, I can tell you guys right now, there, there's two games on here that I'm probably going to end up purchasing uh, if I can get it with the Best Buy or if I just order it online because I think the deals are also good online. Um, that is, first off, Monopoly. One, because I love board games. Like We used to play board game games back on the PC and stuff. Monopoly, Life, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's been a long time, and I miss it. And what, what got me interested in this game was actually when Easy Allies launched like two years ago. They played this Monopoly game. I can't remember if it was on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. But they played it, and they were just having a blast. And ever since then, I've been wanting to play it, but I've been resisting buying it on PC or any other platform because I really put all my gaming budget right now into Switch. Mm -hmm. Um, And before that, I was kind of working at Zelda Informer, so I kind of backed off of of, of buying necessarily all the games I want to buy um, because I just didn't have time to play it. It was, I, it was Zelda, yeah. and I worked in another job, so right. I, I just didn't have time. So, now that my job is basically, let's play as many Switch games as possible and have a blast, <laughs> I get to actually expand myself, and I want Monopoly, and I want it bad. And for half off, I feel like it's going to be worth it. For, at 40 bucks, I'm like, that's a little steep for Yeah, game. it is, for a board game. game. The, especially when it's this old. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could be 60 but I mean, we're talking about a game that's probably 20 bucks on all other platforms right now. Anyways. Oh, yeah. So, for $20, worth it to me, especially if they get a patch out. There was uh, apparently some issues with it at launch, but they're working on a patch. By the time this, this game's available for me to buy it for 20 bucks, should be patched. So, with a patch, I'm looking forward to playing that. I haven't played Monopoly. Well, I played a, the board game Monopoly, like, last year with my kids. Yeah. Or with Melody, really. Didn't go so well, well with the other kids. Yeah, well, yeah. Didn't really go so well with Melody, either. Oh. I win because I win. A- attention spans. But... It's Most adults game, don't even have the attention span to finish that, Monopoly. It's a game that I want to get together, um, maybe do a live stream or a, a video play of it. Um, get you in on that, maybe if we can get some sitters. Like my parents have to get some time, maybe get Yulia in and see if we can find one other person to come around and uh, maybe my sister or your sister or Chris or someone. Yeah. Find someone else who just wants to join in. We do a 2v2. Yeah. It might, might be some fun times. Otherwise, they'll just go one on one, classic mode. Oh, yeah. Just trying to wreck each other, buying all the properties up. Um, you can, like, make your own boards and stuff, too, apparently. Huh. So, I can make the Nintendo Prime board. Oh, or yeah. Um, it would be good times. So. Now, I wonder if you can actually share those boards with friends. I don't know. That'd be interesting. I don't know enough That'd about it. That'd be kind of cool. I, don't, I mean, you guys out there, this game's been out for a couple of years. You guys know. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I haven't yeah. played it. So, that's definitely one I want to pick up. Um, and the other one, believe it or not, is Sonic Forces. I believe... I, you guys are going to quote me on this, and I... Corrections. <laughs> I believe it's fifty dollars on Switch right now, so okay. that's a half off price. Um, and considering that game just came out, uh, half off a few weeks later is not not too bad of a deal. Um, and on top of that, uh, I mean half off. I know it hasn't reviewed well. I'm well aware it hasn't reviewed yeah. well. But you know what made me get kind of sort of interested in it again? Jim Sterling. I bring him up sometimes because I really enjoy his viewpoints on things. He liked the game. He put up a video that says, I'm not saying it's better than Breath of the Wild, but... Right. Um, and because he has been very critical of Breath of the Wild. But he said that he had less frustrating moments with this game than he did in Breath of the Wild. Hmm. Um, and, of, of course, you know, he he's not trying to attack Breath of the Wild, but he just knows how... He prefaced it and entitled it that way because he knows that that's what people are going to take it as. Is He's saying this game's better than Breath of the Wild. Sonic Forces, better than Breath of the Wild. Jim yeah. Sterling. You know, but that's not what he's saying. He's oh making fun gosh. of people that are going to say that. Yes. But he's saying that he likes it as much as he likes Generations. Um, well, not quite. He says Sonic Generations to him is the best 3D Mario to date. Um, and that he likes it almost as much. He's saying that the great moments in the game aren't as great as Generations, but the low points in the game are not as low as it got in Generations. So mm-hmm. basically, the Sonic Forces isn't as bad. Certain review outlets are, are, are making it out to be, mm-hmm. um, in his opinion. That doesn't mean that it's not bad. The, you know, he noted that there's a lot of things that people, uh, with the Sonic fan base, there's here's the games you're supposed to hate, mm-hmm. and if you don't hate it, you're wrong. Um, so he's like, maybe I'm wrong, but 
I, I don't hate this game. Yeah. So, uh, he also loves the fact that, again, it's another game coming out, no microtransactions, no day one DLC, no massive day one patch, uh, none of the stuff that's kind of, you know, no loot boxes, none of the things that's kind of, huh. you know, seeping wow. into stuff. Like an actual like, game yeah. then just like mario wow. odyssey like yeah not that the other games aren't actual games but like they're but, being but, piecemeal yeah they're being piecemeal. right right like an actual old school game like where it's a game not and I, and not a beta fair, test when it comes out maybe they knew the reception wouldn't be great so they couldn't they just make oh, it worse than right that. but then again you could argue well if you know sales are going to be low you want a couple white whales anyways yeah and there's like costumes and stuff and you're like they easily could have found a way to microtransaction oh yeah them. easily but they didn't uh, so yeah, that's th- those are the two games that are probably interest me the most to purchase myself. The one game here, when I was laughing earlier, you thought I was laughing at you. It's FIFA 18. No, it is. Yeah. I guarantee you, it's not half off on any other platform this this Black Friday. Yeah, probably it, not. it's a new release. Yeah. Oh yeah, triple A release. Very true. I mean, if it is off, it'll be like ten dollars somewhere. Yeah. Switch version, fifty percent off. Yeah, already. This okay. coming off of what well, wasn't it just last week that we talked about EA's abandoning the Switch. Basically, uh, yeah, it was either last week or the week before. Um, one, of the, one of the last three because weeks. Because they, they said, uh, well, I'm sorry, they said that they have no new releases planned for Switch at this time and they will not commit any more new releases until a year out. Um, and yeah, and then there's like rumors out there that like they had to release FIFA 18 on Switch because they're contractually required by FIFA to release a version of FIFA on every gaming platform that comes <laughs> out. So, in theory, they might have not supported Switch at all if they had a choice. Um, Good God, yeah. So yeah, there, there's all of that. Uh, I just I, I just find it funny that I mean, instant discount that lets you know that if it was selling very very well, they would not be allowing these discounts to happen. Right, but you know, if it was an actual or version of the e- game, even if EA doesn't get a say in this because it's just the retailer cutting into their profits, they can't get rid of the game. Yeah. So they're they're that lets you know, like, oh, we have all these copies of FIFA 18 we got for Switch, and we can't sell them, so we have to put them in the discount bin. Yeah. Um. But yeah, otherwise a lot of these other games, uh, I don't know. I, I look at some of the deals and it feels more like just getting rid of the Switch tax deal. You know, buying your buys after Plus, knocking 10 bucks off, that gets rid of the Switch tax, makes it cost yeah. the same as the other versions. Yeah. Same with Puyo Puyo Tetris, um, which is fine. That doesn't mean, mean the bad deals and they get to advertise them. You know, when people advertise a sale, even if it ends up being the same price as other systems, um, people are still going to buy it because it, it's a sale. The, mm-hmm. the whole Kohl's effect. You have to have everything on sale. Yep. Um, so yeah, not, not too bad. I know some of you guys are going to be interested in Dragon Ball Z Universe 2 because I've, I've seen some people ask us to talk about it. I'm not interested in it, so I haven't talked about it. Um, you guys saw me play the demo for Desagia 5 Complete. Very, very interesting game. Very complex mechanics. Made in a, a very complex demo. Fun, though. It was fun. Um, but obviously, I'm, I have no interest in buying that game right now. Now, the thing is, I've said it before and I've gone on record. I want every single physical Switch game, period. I want to own them all. So, technically, I want all of these. So, you want to Pokemon them. I want all of these. But my theory is, a bunch of these games are just going to be even cheaper next year and the year after and the year yeah. after. So, eventually, I'll be able to get some of these physical versions for the dirt cheap. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm kind of waiting. Instead of being like, oh, look at all these deals. I'm like, yeah, I only want to buy the games I'm going to for sure play. Mm-hmm. And then later on, unless you guys want to donate some copies, um, I will be picking up some of this other stuff. Because I understand not all of these games are always going to be in production either. So, right. the prices might not change. And if it's a Nintendo game, like ARMS... It's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's going to stay at the price it's at. Yeah. I got to comment on that one. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll the next that. little part yeah. of it here. So next up is the 3DS games. You know what? I just thought for a little bit. Why don't you go over the 3DS games as well? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll actually switch to, to 20 and, and, and 40 and, and okay. It doesn't, that, I wasn't making fun of, I know, of that. So. But still. All right. <laughs> Pokemon Omega Ruby. 20 bucks, normally 40. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, 15 bucks, normally 40. Animal Crossing New Leaf, Welcome Amiibo, for 15 bucks, normally 20. Mario Kart 7. This is the one that I have the problem with. How old is this game? Just, just, just keep going. Keep going. Ugh! 20 bucks, normally 30. New Super Mario Brothers 2, 20 bucks, normally 30. Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadow of Valentia. Valencia. Valencia. Uh, 30 bucks, normally 40. And then Zelda Ocarina of Time 2D bundle. 2DS bundle. A 2DS bundle for 80 bucks. Yep, and that bundle is uh, the, the big fat like 2DS, not, not the one that folds. Uh, it's it's custom in that it's the Ocarina of Time green 
with like yellow buttons, but there's no artwork on it. It's really weird. Um, and then it includes a, a digital copy of Ocarina of Time two, uh, Woo! 3D, not 2D. I said 2D because it's 2DS, but Ocarina of Time 3D. Uh, not a bad, not a bad price on that bundle per se. It's the only hardware bundle. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Switch was probably not going to get any discounts this holiday with how well it's selling. Um, what I find interesting about that hardware bundle is like you can get like the 2DS itself for like 70 bucks. So you're paying ten dollars extra for the game. Granted, mm-hmm. I think Ocarina of Time 3D still sells for forty dollars. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the that was that wasn't a launch game, but that that game came out like three months or four months after launch. It came out uh, the very first E3, and uh, the game itself, and I believe the 3DS released in March. So in June is when that game came out. So it's one of the older games out there, um, and it's a remake on top. So. What was the comment that you had? Hold on. I know you're looking up a release date. I I guarantee you it was June. Because see, I, I covered Zelda, so I know this release date for sure. I don't I don't know remember what day, but it was in June. Good God. No, you're not even close. What? I can time three D came no, out. In no, June. no, 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 no. No, I that yeah, that part. Yeah, when did when did the Mario Kart seven come out? December first of twenty eleven. Yeah, but see you think that's bad. It was it was June of twenty eleven when Arcane Time three D came out and it still cost forty bucks. And the game you're complaining about right now Rimini. launched at forty, and apparently it's only thirty now. So they actually did reduce the price of it. What? Oh, the Mario Kart Seven. Yeah. So Mario Kart Seven has seen a price reduction. Uh, yeah, good guy. It should be twenty, not even twenty bucks to begin with. Oh, so you're no, saying no, no, 3DS game shouldn't even should no, even be forty? No. Not one. No, not not originally. I'm saying now, wow. it shouldn't be. 30 bucks? 30 bucks. It shouldn't even be... It should be barely 20 to be... Now. Okay. I mean... Well, what's your it's, it's, it's six years old. Plus, we have had two outcomes of Mario Kart... With Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Technically the same game. I, I, yes, and they, and but... They charged and they added for Deluxe. Yes. Two. And they added stuff to it. So, it's still another separate kind of quote-unquote release of it. But even though it's technically the same game. But come on. Six years down the road... And on a platform that's kind of going he's, bye-bye? He sees me smirking. He's like, I know you're about to blast me. I'm like, am I yeah. actually not going to blast you? I think um, this is a common thing with Nintendo games. And here's the deal. Like, you know, if we, if we continue the conversation, I don't know. I mean, the, the best deal, you know, if we just, before I get into that comment, like, just talk about what, what games are like the best deals or mm-hmm. interest me. Um, I don't have a 3DS right now because I'm all in on Switch. But if I did have a 3DS... I believe it or not, never played Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. So a fifteen dollar price over forty, I will mm-hmm. jump in on that if I had a three DS. So. I'm trying to figure out if which one. Which, um, and which I, I really want to play Fire Emblem Echoes, so I would maybe consider that at thirty. That is actually a, a newer game, um, in terms of well, in comparison to every other game on the platform, I think it's the newest game. Uh, yeah, I had, I had Dark Moon. Yeah, so. And that would be both the only one that interests me on here, too. So, Like I said, I, if I don't know Echoes, I, I'd be all up on that. But, again, I don't own a 3DS. And that it, here's the thing. That's the newest game on here. So getting to, to your point about game pricing, Nintendo does not reduce the price of their games. Uh, you can find them cheaper, especially if you're an Amazon Prime member. Uh, you get, like, sometimes 15 to 20% off of brand new games, even Nintendo games, um, when you pre-order. And then they also regularly discount, like, They'll knock down, like, I think you can get uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby, which they're charging 20 I think you can get it for almost 30 bucks on Amazon. Because uh, Amazon will, will, like, they'll have extra stock, so they'll just start chopping down the price themselves. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean, you know, when they, if they order, need to order new copies, they're not getting a discount on that. Nintendo's still charging the normal price because their suggested retail price is still 40 bucks. Um, Nintendo does not reduce the price of games. I mean, if you think about this, New Super Mario Bros. 2 was uh, one of the early games. Now, to be fair, it is 30 now instead of 40. Um, Mario Kart 7 was one of the early games. It's 30 now instead of 40. So these are actually cases, rare cases, where Nintendo has actually reduced the price since launch. But then you have games. Yeah, New Super Mario Bros. broke. Like two was Omega 2012. Ru- Omega Ruby, by the way. This doesn't. This isn't even um, Omega Sapphire or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is only the Ruby version. That's yeah, being that's a little weird. And on top of that, it's still forty dollars when Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon's coming out at yeah. the same price when Sun and Moon just came out last year. Yeah. So it's at least two generations behind by the time the sale happens. Yeah. And it's still forty bucks. Yeah. 
See, this upsets me even more than, say, like Mario Kart 7. Because Mario Kart 7 was the only Mario Kart game on the whole platform. So, it doesn't, yeah. Mario Kart 8, you got to use a yeah, right, for a 3DS right. owner. Right. Um, but there's been two more Pokemon games, four technically, yeah. since o- Omega Ruby. And they're still charging two, full two price. Two generations. Still charging full price. Yeah. And I know, yeah, no, they're not they're charging 20. I'm like, yeah, but after the that's sales, the, that's over, the goes, sale. goes back up to 40. Yes. And I realize Pokemon keeps selling and keeps selling. And Nintendo's excuse to keep their game prices high is they don't feel their games devalue just because they're old. And this is an argument that I I agree with at some point because I know some people will say, oh, like, Ocarina Time 3D was a good game. No, it is a good game. No, yeah, it didn't right. stop being a good game just because it right. came out in 2011. Right. Um, so I understand that argument in that gamers have a mentality that games are worth less the longer they've been on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that is because of... I, I wonder if this attitude would exist if the yearly releases weren't a thing. Right. I, because it, yeah. this whole reducing game prices rapidly after release wasn't really a thing until the mm. late in the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 life. And it really was because of games like Assassin's Creed, and Call of Duty, yeah. uh, sports games, Series games yeah. that came out every single year mm-hmm. where obviously the value is the closer you get to releasing the next game mm-hmm. and you know when that next game is coming. Right. Versus like a Breath of the Wild, we might not get another Zelda game like that for three or four more years. Right. So why would that reduce in value per se versus a game like Call of Duty when you get Call of Duty World War II just came out and there'll be a new Call of Duty next year. So obviously, you know, four months from now, six months from now, you're halfway to the next game. Right. Should be half off at least. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I will agree that, you know, but because the ones of that... that pricing though, that's why other companies started doing it. Like Shadow of War that just came out, the new the new Lord of the Rings game, that game's gonna be like twenty bucks in three months. Yeah. Cause that's that these Yearly releases started this trend, and so now mm-hmm. all third parties just do it with all their games, kind of making people who buy games at launch suckers. I, I know yeah. it, it, that's just kind of the way it is. If, yeah. you're, if you're a gamer on a budget, you really should not be buying games at launch. Right. Uh, unless it's on a Nintendo platform, because they're yeah. not going to get reduced. Right. Um, no, where the, like the series games where they come out, that is kind of more of my my beef is that they've we've had more games of that series since. Yeah, that's why the Omega Ruby price being still being forty. I'm like, really? Yeah. That's still that's not even down at thirty. Like, and it's still forty bucks, brand new. Right, and and you know, so that's kind of where my anger lay is is more of the in the series games. I understand like your point with Breath of the Wild and well, like it, Odyssey it, and stuff like that. Where that's kind of the way like Mario Kart Seven, as upset as you might be at that price, technically it's the only Mario Kart game platform. That is very true, and, and they already yeah. did reduce the price. Right. But it Not just, it just want. right, and it just kind of feels like it's well, you know, being, wonder, being six years old. I think Nintendo, I don't have a problem with their pricing, like saying that their games don't lose value because well, they I mean, don't. Great games the, are always there are, great. There are NES games that are freaking yeah. worth a crazy ton of money. Great games are always worth money and always great. Um, the Breath of the Wild, you know, this holiday isn't worth any less now than it wasn't launched back in March. Right. I mean, in my mind, it's not. This is my favorite game of all time, a little biased there, but I feel like... Um, it's not so much that I think Nintendo needs to reduce their like reduce the price of their games, um, you know, as rapidly as other companies do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing is, someone's gonna bring up, well, they do the Nintendo Selects or like the the best of kind of. Yes, they do. They do have twenty dollars games like on Wii U, 3DS, mm-hmm. and a little bit should have it on Switch. Or they take some of their top selling games from years past and make them twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fine. I understand they do that, but it's so rare. Mm-hmm. I would rather like see like Breath of the Wild. This holiday, sure, it's sixty bucks. Next holiday, it should be forty. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, even you can you can say even less. You could say I, I don't know with with how big of a game. Well, it depends. The Wild is. They, if they pack in the DLC, make it right. Keep it at sixty with yeah. the DLC. Right. If it okay. doesn't pack in that the DLC, sense. it better yeah. be forty. Right. Because then you're yeah. gonna pay twenty okay, extra yeah. for the DLC anyway. I guess that yeah. Um, you know, like Mario Odyssey, it's probably still gonna be sixty bucks a year from now. That's mm-hmm. fine. But the holiday after, when we when we hit that two year mark from mm-hmm. release, I'm sorry, it shouldn't be sixty anymore. And I'm not yeah. saying that because the game's not worth that in terms of its it, how awesome the game is. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that because one, more games will have come out, mm-hmm. and two, the sales of that game are probably going to be boosted by reducing the price. Right. And I feel like that's something Nintendo doesn't necessarily take advantage of is while their games are evergreen, mm-hmm. Odyssey, uh, Mario Kart, Splatoon. You know, Zelda, these games are going to be selling every single month for months and months and months mm-hmm. for, for the duration of Switch. You could still see a boost in sales 
if you would just reduce the price once in a while. Right. It doesn't need to be right. rapid fire. Once every year, year and a half. Yeah, yeah, yearly game. Or, um, or in the case of Pokemon. Right. Yeah, that that's... But then again, is that Nintendo's... Time, but is that Nintendo's doing, or is that... Nintendo makes a huge chunk of profits off it, so I'm sure they get... I'm Pokemon sure they price. probably have a say on it. Yeah, because they yeah they, they definitely have a say. I mean, it's their platform, too, it comes out on, so... Yeah. I think... Um, they're getting away with it, but I feel like the Pokemon games especially, because those aren't yearly, but they feel like they're every other year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when a new generation most... hits, the old generation should come down 10 bucks. Right, like, yeah, at the very least. Like Omega Ruby is out, that's great. Sun and Moon releases, that should be 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, that should be 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. Very easy way to reduce the pricing oh, for on sure. those games that release more rapid fire. Yeah. Um, Nintendo doesn't have a lot of games that do that, but the ones that do, like Pokemon, oh, come on. Mm-hmm. Gotta reduce that a little faster than that. Uh, for for Omega Ruby to still have an MSRP of thirty nine ninety nine when Ultra Sun and Moon is coming out at thirty nine ninety nine, it's just yeah, it's ridiculous. To me. Oh, very much so. Ridiculous. We know Pokemon Switch is going to be sixty. No, oh, right. So it's like is Sun and Moon still going to be selling at full price at forty when Pokemon Switch comes out? You bam well believe it is. Yeah. And the three DS might even be retired by then, and they're still going to be selling yeah. it for forty. Um, it's an interesting situation, and the thing is. What I actually find really interesting about this is despite the 3DS being out longer and having the bigger library of games and the ability to reduce prices on more, on like, they could be selling 3DS XLs with bundles, they could be selling 2DS XLs with bundles, you know, that just came out. And instead, the Switch list is almost more impressive than the 3DS list. Oh, for sure. And the Switch isn't even been out a year. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if even Best Buy is like, hey, our 3DS sales aren't that good anyways. So we're going to have a bunch of sales on Switch games instead of 3DS. Right. Because 3S is a huge library of games that could be having sales on or bundling mm-hmm. them together. Oh, sure. And so they're like, look, we're going to do the Doctor of Time 2DS bundle because I think that's being pushed by Nintendo themselves. Right. Because um, that's a brand new announcement. And then, yeah, they're they're pretty much like, yeah, here's a, here's a few games, but uh, yeah, you should be buying Switch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remember how we keep saying that 3DS is cannibalizing Switch, or, or I'm sorry, Switch is cannibalizing 3DS, and people are like, no, it's not. You don't know what that means. Well, here's a prime example, at least at the Best Buy sales, where... There's no reason there shouldn't be better better deals for 3DS games, and Switch oh, yeah. is getting like the best deal. Yeah, by far. Um, and you could argue, well, there's no first party games in there. You're right, but Switch hasn't even been out a year. We right. just got done talking about how they don't do sales on first party yeah, games. Right. So I mean, they still have decent games in there. We're talking about you know the Saga of Five complete on huge JRPG. Uh, we're talking about you know even games like Bomberman and Sonic Forces. Mm-hmm. You know, Puyo Puyo Tetris, FIFA 18, as much as I've chastised it, still FIFA 18, uh, you know, 30 bucks off. And this is, you know, obviously some of the smaller games, you know, Minecraft Story Mode, The Complete Adventure, I know that's pretty popular with some people. Um, we're talking about games that people actually might care about buying. I mean, mm-hmm. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition, if I hadn't already beaten the game on Wii U, I'd probably buy that too. And I, again, I want to own all these physical games, but I don't know. All right, let's move on to our, our next topic then. We've talked a little bit about it already, third parties. We have some comments here from third-party companies. Um, and I have something to add on at the end. So, Eric, I'm going to have you read through uh, 2K's comments and Marvelous's comments. And then I'll read the rest. Okay. So, 2K's comments on NBA 2K18 on the Switch. In addition to v- uh, versions for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, 2K18 is our debut offering or yeah yep yeah good god i can't read today right. i can't do anything today uh, that's what happens when you have like a half day of work yeah know? right oh god it was bad at the end of work there i, I couldn't type or the squat uh-huh. so it's just like i need to get out of here I'm yeah to get out of here yeah <laughs> yeah so uh debut offering for the nintendo switch so far we're very pleased with the title's performance on this new platform and we anticipate continued strong demand across all platforms heading into the holiday season Along with growth in sales, game sales, our 2K, NBA 2K series continues to benefit from increasing engagement and recurrent consumer spending. Again, uh, one, <laughs> thing I note, one thing I didn't <laughs> note about this is 2K now, like 50% of their revenue is now from um, extra transactions on games. 50% of Good all of their revenue. So when they talk about you know increased engagement and recurrent consumer spending, that's what they're talking about. It's working as much as we might hate all the microtransaction VC stuff, especially in my career on NBA 2K18. It, it, it's financially working. They're not going to stop. Right. We spoke with our wallets, folks. Yeah, that's about how it works. All right, move on then. Marvelous? 
Marvelous. Okay. Oh, wait, no. I'm no. sorry. The general comments. Yes. Sorry. My bad. I'm skipping ahead. Oh, you want me to take the general comments? Yeah. Oh, is that from 2K as well? Yep. Okay. Take two, Chief Executive Officer uh, Strauss Zelenik. Sure. Zelenik? Sure. I probably butchered it. Uh, has said that the Switch install base is growing quite rapidly and they find it a, a positive, a potentially ex- exciting platform. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Good God. Okay. You only have to get through Marvelous and I got the rest. Good God. Which is, then, then I was actually quite a bit on that. Okay, anyways. Marvelous. Good God. Okay. Marvelous confirmed that they do not or they do have more Switch support on the way, including both ports and new titles. No details on these games were given. Uh and to give you guys an example of some of the Marvelous games, I wrote down some here because at first when I said when I was putting down this quote and I'm like, I don't even know what, what games did they make. So yeah. why should I care, you know, that they are making a bunch of games for Switch? And it turns out that they've made games like Story of Seasons, Monster Hunter Stories. And no, they don't control whether they get to make Monster Hunter, so you know, that's up to Capcom. They hired them mm-hmm. to do that. Uh, Fate slash Extella, pretty big franchise. Uh, the Umbra Star was the last one they made. Uh, Valhalla Knights. Uh, they are, I believe, the publishers on Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Uh, so again, I know some people mm-hmm. anticipated that game. They have you know some, some backing in that. Uh, and here's some games that some people might really care about. Harvest Moon. Yeah, they've made almost every Harvest Moon game, nice. and the Rune Factory games, uh, which are kind of similar to Harvest Moon but in a different way. Um, and then we'll move on to uh, s- some other. This is some publishers you guys have probably heard of, like Ubisoft. Uh, did a video on this earlier, but nineteen uh, percent of their sales in quarter two came from Nintendo Switch. That is crazy. In comparison to twenty percent that came from Xbox One, and thirty one or thirty two percent that came from PlayStation Four, and the rest came from like PC and. Oh, the random, which I assume they mean mobile games or something. That's crazy. Um, yeah, that, that really crazy considering the install base switch. Like, well, considering right. that majority of those sales were probably Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah, I mean obviously. Well, right. yeah. Otherwise, Just Dance, but Just Dance released in Q three. I mean, Just Dance twenty seventeen was out, but I'm pretty sure that released in Q one, and I don't think that that sold very well. Right. So, I mean, it was a late release of, of a game that mm-hmm. really only sells during the holidays. Right. Uh, Square Enix, another big company, they had a lot to say. About Switch during the and this and by the way, all this reporting comes with these companies' financial reports because it's the end of Q two. Enter uh, well, we're actually in Q three right now, but this is their quarter two meetings mm-hmm. um, about what's happening. And these are always really really big ones because these are the meetings that happen right before holiday. Um, so because a lot of because I think something like a third or half of the industry's revenue is made during the holidays. Um, so. Kind of uh, big, that doesn't doesn't so, surprise so the me. Q three reports obviously going to be huge as well because that's going to be hey how do we do the during the holidays, um, Ubi's or I'm sorry Square Enix uh, they say that well Pro- Project Octopath Traveler and Dragon Quest eleven on Switch seem to be on track for next year or next fiscal year that's important because that means after March in 2018, mm-hmm. um, Switch's momentum is strong and Nintendo is doing great. Uh, and it's good for Square Enix, apparently, even though I don't think they have a game out yet. Uh, Switch is ideal for middle-range games, says Square Enix. Uh, and Square Enix is really good at making those kind of games. Like, Bravely Default was an example. would probably be one mm-hmm. of their the games that released on 3DS that would be middle-range. Um, so they're going to work on games like that aggressively. What's not noticed here is they also said... Um, when they're working on those middle range games, they would probably make them multi platform. So while Project Octopath Travelers is exclusive, we shouldn't get used to that. Um, right, which one? You know, they're gonna. And the thing is, I don't have any problem with that. Um, more people should be able to enjoy the games. Right, and they're a third party company, so they yeah, really exactly. shouldn't be worried about exclusives. But yeah, anyways, and I, I mean, like, w- w- just a small little incident. Uh, you know, like if it's it's not like it's Nintendo, it's not like it's Sony, it's not like it's Microsoft coming and out with a game. It's not like Ubisoft making a Mario right. combined with one of their right, right, right. It, it's it's those I can understand being, you know, exclusive because they're that company's thing. But if it's you know third party, more power to them to get it on the as many consoles as they can. Yeah, I, I don't even know why Project Octopath Traveler is exclusive. I, Nintendo I, honestly, might have paid Nintendo might have paid pretty penny to maybe, have exclusive, but it's, but it's a middle range game. I don't know why they would do that. I don't know. I mean, it's not like they're an indie developer that needs the money. So, I, true. You know, I don't know. And Dragon Quest XI has been on all platforms, so that's, you know, it's just a late port to Switch. Um, and then it says, uh, when they're considering games for Switch, and this is what makes the middle range comment really weird. When considering games for Switch, Square, Square Enix will not rule out any of their IPs. <clears throat> this includes new IPs, currently active ones, and IPs that might not be active right now. 
Um, so that comment I, I find very, very interesting just because first they say middle range games they think are the best for Switch, but then they're like, yeah, but we're going to consider every IP we have, which yeah. gives people hope for the Final Fantasy 15 port that people right. want. Um, and all that stuff. So that's very interesting. And we know that they want to port Final Fantasy 15 to Switch, and they were thinking about moving it to Unreal Engine, but we haven't heard any updates since. No guarantee it's coming to the platform. It just, they're highly interested in bringing it to the platform. Um, and there's some notes in here that are actually going to make that very interesting to talk about as well. Uh, Square Enix also said that new Switch games uh, may become multi-platform. Um, so that might be an indication that Project Autobot Travelers might be just a timed exclusive. Yeah. And then, then There's also that platform. Term. Um and then it says uh but Square Enix promises to aggressively make games for Switch. Aggressively. That's awesome. They are not dismissing the Switch at all. Um, hey EA, take note. And they go on to say this is an important note too, because we've heard that some people say this, but we haven't heard a third party company come out and say this. Switch's core architecture is similar to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Some adjustment is necessary but multi-platform games are not impossible. Um, so, yeah. Remember when uh, some people were like, oh, the Switch is underpowered and this and that? Yeah, it's underpowered, but because of the architecture structure from NVIDIA, mm-hmm. it's not that hard to port games to it. You just have to adjust the games to, to work on the platform. Right. Example, Doom, L.A. Noir, Skywalker. But you know what I mean. Wolfenstein 2, the new class, it's like, yeah. again, these games can run on Switch. It's just you have to make some sacrifices and some adjustments. Right. So again, unlike Wii U, which was vastly different in architecture, mm-hmm. you kind of running out of excuses this mm-hmm. generation to not bring games. Unless you're, and this is always a valid excuse, I will say, that Switch does not provide you enough power to present the game the way you wish it would be presented. Mm-hmm. I can understand that because then you're saying, look, we don't want our games at 720p. We don't mm-hmm. want them at 30 FPS. We don't want them at the... We want super, super... Like, like we feel the giant draw distance in Horizon Zero Dawn is important to the game. And obviously, it's a PlayStation 4 exclusive, but if that was multi-platform, then they could see where they might not want that on Switch. But again, right. that's not what's being said. Right. If that was what the excuse is given, it's like, oh, right. yeah, the Switch it doesn't fit your vision for the game. But a lot of these games, come on, Switch, right. Switch can do it. Um, and the last one, uh, I noted this one in not because it's necessarily a big AAA developer, but the devs behind System Shock started a Kickstarter. I don't know if you guys remember System Shock. Kind of a, excuse me, wow, kind of a popular <laughs> game, semi-popular game back during the 90s. Uh, there was System Shock and System Shock 2. I played them on PC. I'm not sure if they ever came out on console. Uh, they started a Kickstarter, uh, and on the Kickstarter, surprisingly... They want to remake System Shock, and it includes a Switch version. Nice. So, again, I'm not even sure if System Shock ever came to PC or came to consoles, and if it did, I don't remember it. I played it on PC, so Mm -hmm. that's very, very interesting to me. So, lots and lots of good news from third parties. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Hey, EA, take note. No game announcements, which you're not going to game announcements at a financial brief. Right. But, yeah, EA. God. What's the thing that most excites you? Out of all the stuff that was said, I mean, um, these are major companies. So. Right, right, right. Um, the fact that that Square Enix said that they're going to aggressively make games for the Switch—that's that's a, that's that a is, commitment. That is awesome. Like Two K could talk positively about sales. Right. Uh, you know, other companies, you know, you know, it, can mention things that are nice, but oh, it, yeah, aggressive. That's a, that's like we're not just playing around. Yeah, we have a bunch of titles coming. And we just can't tell you. And, and apparently. Ubisoft needs to make more games for the Switch too, because nineteen percent of their their profit is sales coming in 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 from the Switch. That's crazy. Now I do worry that it only sold because of Mario. Let's just be real. If it didn't well, have Mario in the game, people wouldn't have bought it. Right. Um. That doesn't change how good the game is. I don't know because we don't know what the game would have been like without Mario. But what I will say is. Games like Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle 1, there better be a damn sequel. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. It, it can be same generation of sequel. This isn't a, a, a game or a budding franchise that needs to be one per platform. This is a game that people play for the levels and for the bosses oh, and yeah. the weapons. And you can just make more the of the same. Make more of the same. <laughs> and, and bring, heck, maybe yeah. this time the Mushroom Kingdom invades the Rabbid. Land. Whoa. Yowzers. Yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden you flip the script and... You have rabbits being taken over by Goombas and crazy stuff going on. I mean, this could yeah. be insane how they could make that work. Yeah. Um, and we know rabbits technically exist in the quote-unquote real world. Yeah. Um, so, 
Uh, it would be very, very interesting. And I don't want to hear that Mario can't do it because New Donk City is a thing. Yeah. So shush it. <laughs> um, besides, the rabbits are in that world, so let's just... Yeah. Um, and anyways, I think New Donk City is more realistic than anything the rabbits have ever produced, even in the cartoon series. Oh, yeah, series, yeah, so. for sure. Um, but <laughs> The cartoon series, yes. The cartoon I forgot series. all about the cartoon, cartoon series. series is amazing. It's my favorite part of rabbits. Oh, yeah. Cartoons. Uh, but I think while this doesn't prove that Ubisoft games can sell on Switch, because again heavily reliant on the Mario IP. I think yeah. what this can do is it reduces the risk for Ubisoft to release games because mm-hmm. while Ubisoft abandoned Switch or Switch not sorry, Wii U, even though they gave it a good, you know, two two plus year run or a year and a half, two year run of releasing quality games from Watch Dogs and, and Assassin's Creed, two different Assassin's Creed games, um, and all that stuff. And Zombie U, they never really had that one game that besides Just Dance, of course. Right. That well that was a hit. Um, that could offset losses elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, with it being as successful as it is, so successful, it made up almost 20% of their total business in the quarter. Um, and still not enough holiday sales for the end. Who knows how many people are going to pick oh. up Odyssey and then grab Kingdom Battle right along right. with it, because they're going to be right next to each other in the right. store. Um, when you see stuff like that happening, it makes me realize that now is the time for Ubisoft to dive in. Mm-hmm. Because even if they are not going to bring Assassin's Creed Origins, maybe they just can't. Um, but they bring their next Assassin's Creed. Uh, they're you know they they port even old, like the division which is using the Snowdrop engine, which is what uh, we talked about this before. The Snowdrop engine is their current gen engine. That's yeah. what this game was built on. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That's what the Division was built on. The Division was the first mm-hmm. game to, to launch in that engine. So you can see a Division port. You can see future Assassin's Creeds will probably be built in Snowdrop. So you can see a port of the next Assassin's Creed game. Um, especially, you know, if that next Assassin's Creed game can even be, you know, remotely as good as Origins. Origins mm-hmm. is reviewed very well. Um, so what I would like to see then is that Ubisoft says, look, we don't know if Assassin's Creed or The Division or any of these games you bring over are going to sell, but we know that Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle will. So if we're working on a second game in there, that's going to offset any potential losses we might get by taking a risk by putting Assassin's Creed out there because they have that successful IP. Mm-hmm. They know it's going to sell. Plus, you know, Just Dance is obviously still selling it off to keep making yeah. it. Even right? if, I think yeah. they even released it this year on Wii still. So, uh, the, holy it, cow, it, it, it's still selling. I, I'm for what like pennies on the dollar. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not sixty bucks. On <laughs> well, it better not be. But, um, well, I thought new, we just. I thought we just talked about a, it. It's a brand new game. I thought we just talked about this. Yeah, but it's a brand new game. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It is. I, just I, Dance 2018. Yes. I, I, dude, I, own, I own Just Dance 2017 on Switch. I do. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the first games I bought from the platform. Yeah. I like oh. a little. I like getting a little crazy fat. You guys have yeah. seen me dance on live stream before. I was doing. Where is it? It's not public. <laughs> um, yeah. But I've danced. I've danced at Just Dance on live stream. Um, maybe here's the deal, folks. We get the 50k by E3 next year on our YouTube channel. I'll I'll do some Just Dance 2018 for you guys live Ooh, on stream boy. in celebration. Um, so there you go. All these people always request me to dance again. 50k. There you go. We got to do it. Get yeah, your friends. Do. Get your friends. Get your friends if they're following the channel if you want to see a fat guy dance again. <laughs> um, show off my moves. Uh, and the funny thing is, I'm not actually that good. Well, I was really, really good at Just Dance 2015. 2017, yeah. I wasn't too. So yeah. 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 It always depends on what songs they include. If I really, really like the song, then I care to actually get good at the dance. Right. If I don't like the song, then I'm like, whatever. I'm doing half flips and other stuff. Too, just, yeah, care. yeah, right. I don't care. Or I'm, or I'm just going to start. Mem- memorize it and memorize That's it and right. bring it on in the dance floor. Yeah. Uh, so Ubisoft, or uh, I'm sorry, Square Enix is the one you're excited about. Um, yeah. Is there any games from Square Enix you want to see in particular? Mm, golly. Not anything that I can think of off the top of my head, but... I can think of one. What? Besides Final Fantasy XV, which I brought yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, Secret of Mana HD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not coming yeah. to Switch for some reason, but what? they're aggressively pursuing Switch. Wait, what? No, it's not, it's, not, it's not announced for Switch. They said they're not bringing it to the Switch. Officially announced, not coming to Nintendo Switch. I want to see them in 2018 turn around and be like, we're sorry, we made a mistake. It should have been on Switch all the time. Yeah. There's no way that game can't run on Switch. Basically, get the exact same settings as all the... It's not that visually impressive, the, yeah. the, re- the remaster. And I'm sorry, it used to be my favorite game of all time. I was going to say, it, it used to run on a freaking Nintendo yeah. platform. Well, it's remastered, so it's not like the same visuals, per se. Oh, right, but still. But And now it's got full voice acting, I think. Um, 
which is fine. But still, like but still, not on Switch. <laughs> when it was a Nintendo platform exclusive game, right? Not coming back out on a Nintendo platform, right? That's that's at a time. That's what part I, confused the heck out of me. I understand it on Wii U. Yeah. But at a time when Nintendo has a highly popular, platform oh yeah, for sure, that can run the game. Oh, for sure. And at a time when the original version just released again on the SNES Classic. Yeah. Right. So it's like, wait, what? <laughs> It makes the most sense. Nintendo fans are the ones most likely to buy this oh, game. Oh, for sure. Oh, man. So, yeah, they. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming when they say aggressively pursuing, they've also aggressively uh, rethought their stance on Switch <laughs> with this game. They better have because it. I'm not only just because it's one of my favorite games, it just it, it makes too much sense. Why wouldn't you bring it to Switch? Yeah. It's just, I was upset when they announced it. It's why I didn't report on it much. I made one little mess, like thing about it, and I'm like, dude, how is this game not coming to Switch? Regardless of what I think of the visuals or anything else they're doing to the game, why is it not on Switch? Right. That's what's most upsetting. Forget if the game's actually... I mean, it's still Secret of Mana. It's got to still be good. Yeah, right. But, I mean, oh, so bad. So it makes me upset. Um, here's a hot take on Secret of Mana, at least the original release. Um, when some people ask me, you know, why has Secret of Mana been one of my favorite games of all time? And I'm going to have to say this again on a Q&A later this week, but that's okay. You'll hear it before you hear this podcast. Um, Secret of Mana, to me, is the only video game I have ever played that, if we're talking about perfection, I can't think of a single fault in that game. Hmm. And it's weird because I could think of faults in Breath of the Wild, but I still like Breath of the Wild more. Mm-hmm. Um, and that goes to prove that, you know, how you rank video games or how you get perfect tens out doesn't necessarily mean that the game is flawless. But to me, Secret of Mana was flawless. Mm-hmm. Now, when I play the remake, I might have issues and then be like, oh, that was an issue with the original game. I'm like, mm, something they did in the remake made it stand out a hell of a lot more than back yeah. then. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, for me, though, man, obviously I talked about Ubisoft. I'm pretty excited because there's a lot of Ubisoft games I really, really like. Mm-hmm. Um, one idea I wanted to bring up was... 2K. Now, from the sounds of it, you know, they're basically saying that uh, 2K18, you know, it says they're very pleased with the title's performance on the new platform, Mm -hmm. meaning that it must have met expectations and maybe even exceeded it Mm -hmm. a little bit. Not so much so that you'd be like, oh my God, it massively exceeded our expectations, but it it sold to a point that they're pleased that they brought the game to the platform. That means, uh, that's really good news to me because I I love NBA 2K, uh, despite its issues, and even though most of it's all patched now. Um, Yeah. And, and, and Bledsoe is now on the box, so I, I just had to find a way to bring that up as well. Oh, did, did you check it? What? Did you check it? Check oh, it. I, didn't, I didn't know if you, because I know you saw the update for 2K18. I didn't know if you had oh, checked, yeah, actually I don't know checked if the record. He, I don't know. If he's not, I'm going to put him on the box and start <laughs> a new season with him, because <laughs> right. I, I oh, right. Eric Bledsoe, I'm yeah. so excited as a Bucks fan. But um, what, what's interesting here is that obviously 2K19 is probably going to happen next year. On Switch will be because they tried a 2K game on Wii U, didn't sell enough, never saw it again. So this to me sounds like the sales are good enough to justify 2K19. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that they're really excited about the potential in Switch because of how well it's selling, meaning that they might even think they can sell even more copies of 2K19. Mm-hmm. This will be a bigger install base, and they will have already had 2K18, which I always think helps with future sales on yearly releases. Um, if you're there year one and you keep bringing it out, that's why I think if Call of Duty World War II would have been here this year, the next Call of Duty next year will perform better than if they decide to bring Call of Duty next year. Um, and again, there, we'll never have proof of that because we didn't get a Call of Duty right, this year. Right. Um, but that's just my belief that you could build an audience um, faster if you're there day one. Um, what excites me about this, and this is something we briefly talked about before, I want Nintendo to get on the phone with 2K and look, look, you're really happy about this, you're really happy about that, you're really happy about the potential of Switch. Here's a potential for you. We're bringing NFL 2K5 back. We'll pay for it. Wow. Not, not even 2K5, but 2K19, a new huh. NFL game, and we're just going to... Because EA, EA's jump shit. All Nintendo has to say is, bye, we're done with you, EA. We're done. We don't, we're, you you Because the thing is, the Madden exclusivity license with the NFL only exists if there's a Madden game on the platform. There's no Madden game on Switch, so another NFL game can come out on Switch using NFL logos and NFL, all, all that stuff. Uh, so all huh. Nintendo has to be like, look, we're going to MLB the show this bad boy. We're, we're going to, we're PlayStation 4 basically destroyed the 2K baseball game right. by releasing MLB the show and just having to be that much better. So right. while this won't destroy Madden because it's exclusive on Switch, they could end up bringing over a large chunk of the Madden fan base when they find, wait a second. First off, remastered. You can start out just by remastering 2K5 for next year. Oh, yeah. And just modern teams, modern rosters. Yeah. Remastered 2K5. And then be like, hey, but 
we're bringing 2K20 in the next year, full brand new yeah. NFL 2K game. Yeah. Nintendo is and like, what about Madden? No, Nintendo's already told EA Madden's never allowed on their platform. Yep. You can bring other games if you want, but if this makes you not happy with us, whatever. Like all the people saying, oh, bye bye, we don't need EA. I will agree with you if and if Nintendo gives them the finger and partners with 2K and says, sorry, we know that this is a huge thing. We could right. release a game at 40 bucks even. It was yeah. 20 bucks back in the day. Make it 40 bucks instead of 60 mm-hmm. and have it be Switch exclusive and mm-hmm. potentially, like, like that was the one thing. They tried, 2K tried competing against Madden. With all pro, yeah, uh, which was a great game. But you use all the the legendary, like it was yeah. it was a really good football game. Problem is, they're using all these legendary players because that's all you can use, right? And you can't use an NFL logo. You don't get any of the NFL branding um, mm-hmm. or any of the current day, like Aaron Rodgers or anything like any mm-hmm. of the current day popular players. Which meant that you're really only going to appeal to people who know who these like John Elway is, and stuff, right? Which you'd be like, who doesn't know John Elway? A lot of younger people that are watching football right. today don't know who these people are. Really, they might know John Elway as, oh yeah, he's the guy that runs the Denver Broncos, right? Um, Not as a quarterback, no, the Denver they're, they're, Broncos. They're the yep. GM or whatever. So yeah, uh, yeah. So it's they might not even know that. It depends on how how in depth they know about more than just their own team, right? Right. Um, big NFL fans over here, if you can't tell. So yeah. uh, that, like, I know that that's like major wishful thinking, mm-hmm. but it, it's one of those things that even if 2K sees this, like, I would like to see 2K reach out and send them and be like, well, when we see EA is not too happy. Mm-hmm. How, what would you think about just telling them they can't bring that game over, but we will produce for you an NFL franchise? Uh, you guys can publish it so it releases worldwide or whatever. We'll make it. We'll put some financial backing in it. You put a little backing in. All we really need for you, Nintendo, is to tell EA they can never release Madden. Because we can use the NFL licensing. Now, what happens if they wanted to release? Is that based on just Nintendo basically saying yes or no? Nintendo controls any game that comes on their platform. Okay. It's their platform. They can block any game they want. Okay. Everything has to get approved by Nintendo. Nintendo just never approves it. Okay. Because, I mean, I can see... EA missed their window. EA could have blocked it by releasing even a crappy version of Madden this year. Yeah. That would have blocked any possibility of of an NFL 2K game. Mm -hmm. But didn't happen mm-hmm. like fifa their contract says they have to release on every platform mm-hmm. we don't know how strict that is if they would have been in trouble if they didn't release on switch or if they maybe not they might have gotten a leeway for this year May, I no just idea. because of how but madden doesn't say they have to release on every platform and you know that because there hasn't been a madden on pc since 2007 right um thanks yeah God, pc version was always awesome but <laughs> being able to have that compete and pull an MLB The Show and basically, look, we're not going to kill it, but we're going to create a whole brand new market and we're going to make a game that's quote-unquote better, mm-hmm. which it probably will be. Or if it's not better, it'll at least be on par. It'll right. be a good NFL game right. that's different. Um, you know, like I know I, I sometimes hate it, sometimes I like it, but I kind of hated the fatigue I would get when you couldn't just hold down the turbo button and right. yeah, it happened. Yeah. Like I know some people are like, oh, that sounds lame. I'm like, but it, it's realistic. As my yeah. thumb gets tired, the player should be getting more tired. Right. A madness is like, oh, we have like this stamina bar, and it's not until it gets to absolutely nothing that your guy slows down. Right. And hey, if you have 99 stamina, it's just never going to hit nothing. <laughs> like, okay, come on. Even people with 99 stamina, they get tired. Yeah. Let's just be real. Um, but yeah, it, the thing is, I like Madden, but I, I think I like Madden just because it's the only NFL game out there. I think if there was a, a, a game that could, you know, another oh, sure. NFL game, I would be all over that because... 2K5 well, Yeah, back in the was day, awesome. it was way better. I mean, there's that. features in 2K5 that I think most of them have been implemented now, but there's still some that are missing. The, the, the ESPN, yeah, highlights. ESPN highlights. ESPN yeah. highlights are missing. I think, you know, you bring back the ESPN partnership into mm-hmm. the mix. There's a lot of things they could do. Um, Although heck, ESPN is kind of falling your, apart. Your would so. be, yeah, yeah they, they, they've had some rating drops, but so is all of cable TV, I think. Yeah, true. Uh, what's interesting, I think, about that is if Nintendo did that, and they partnered with 2K, and they somehow partnered with the NFL Network, which is an official NFL-branded thing for, like, their post-game and pre-game stuff. Because if that happens, that could even tell EA that, yeah, we might not be renewing this exclusivity contract. Well, that'd be end. nice. Because these guys are being innovative and doing something. And that they wouldn't do it right away. Right. But, like, if the first couple games blow up on Switch, it'd be like, uh, it's cheaper, selling way better mm-hmm. on a platform that doesn't have football games. Right. And it's taking away from your sales because people are migrating over to Switch just to play NFL right. 2K. Uh, yeah, anyways, I was just all wishful thinking. We don't, yeah. It's probably not going to happen. No. But 2K, the get thing on is, that. The thing is, I say that, but who would have thought years ago that Sony, of all people, would have came up with MLB The Show? Yeah. 
and took over an American sport like that. Yeah. In 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 the baseball realm. So that's why I'm like, I'm not gonna say never. They, they have a company here that's saying positive things. Already releases mm-hmm. one of their games. They say is a success. They see a lot of potential. So capitalize on that and bring out something that there's a lot of people on other platforms that just want it to exist at all. Right. And they realize that it's not 2K's fault they can't release it on other platforms. They just want to exist. Right. I don't know. That's why I'm excited because I just feel like it's not going to happen, but it should happen. Anyways. All right. So. Yeah, I'm just excited, obviously, about the potential of 2K and obviously Square Enix. Mm Mm-hmm. I know they don't control Tomb Raider anymore because they don't control the studio anymore, but it just maybe they own the rights to the, uh, the two Tomb Raider games that came out so far, so let them come on Switch. That'd be nice. I don't know. I'm just... I've said this all along. Mm-hmm. And, and this... I think this actually gets into our next topic. Yeah. Or... No, not quite. No, that's actually... Well, no, we're going to make topic four our next topic because okay. this actually flows better into it. Um, Got it. Because topic four talks about, you know, how... Uh, Nintendo's early 2018 slate only as Kirby products. Right, right. Or do you think that there is a plan? I think one part of that plan is third-party support. I think yeah. it's blowing up in 2018. Mm-hmm. I know that some people can argue that support for it so far hasn't been better than Wii U overall. That's fine. You probably have a legit argument. Right. I'm not going to disagree. I think, I think the ports have been better, but again, you might have a legit argument that they're not better. That's fine. I understand the arguments exist. I'm not going to dispute that. But in 2018, I think that's where the arguments are going to cease to, to matter between Wii U and Switch for third parties. Mm-hmm. Very clearly, third parties are excited beyond EA for Switch. So I think 2018... Oh, yeah. Telling you guys, telling you, Wolfenstein is not going to be it. There's yeah. going to be more. Yeah. Um, but obviously, that's third parties. Nintendo doesn't control them. Right. They can hope. They can pray. They can talk to them. But they don't control whether or not they decide to release these games. So it is worth noting... That for early 2018, they only right now have Kirby promised to release. Mm-hmm. Um, we're talking early. We're talking winter slash early spring. Maybe even the entirety of spring, to be fair. Um, should we be panicking about the fact that only one game after Xenoblade is slated to come out in, in like a five-month slate? Um, and one exclusive game, even, because Wolfenstein might come out as well. But one exclusive game... Um, and do you think they have a plan? Because the one thing that's happened here in 2017 is there was basically like an exclusive game every other month. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you might be looking at after December 1st, it could be a while. Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking, that, I'm hoping that they're... So to answer the question, I think yes and no. There should be some panic, but not all blown out of proportions panic. Um. The only reason why I say there should be some panic is because it is Nintendo. And Nintendo could Nintendo. Meaning, screw something up. <laughs> so, um, that that does kind of seem some sort of raise a little bit of red flags. But, you know, I could see some of these ones, some of these games that are coming out, you know, here recently, you know, in the, within the next month or so. Still sorry, carrying, obviously. carrying, at least for, you know, a little bit until they can find a... Another big game to come out. Man, maybe there is some announcements that haven't even been made yet that are still slated to come out on uh, in early 2018. Okay. I think that we have to remember when we're talking about this is, and I got this idea actually from a forum topic at Reset Era, just like the Xenoblade topic last week kind of came from there. Mm-hmm. Again, we still haven't got any fan topics. You can submit your fan topics down right. in the comments below. Um or email them, and if you want, Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. Yeah, or tweet them at us. I don't even care. Tweet at Ninty Prime. Um, and I read everything that gets tweeted at us. So, um, yeah, if you, if you have questions, multiple ways to submit. But here's the thing about, about this is before the Nintendo Switch event in January that they had this big live event where they announced one to Switch and did that weird thing with uh, Splatoon 2. Um, God. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Yeah. Before that event happened in January, the only Switch game we knew for sure was even coming was Breath of the Wild. Right. So heading into two months from launch, we technically only knew about one game. Yeah. Then that event happened, and then we knew about a bunch of games. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, we knew or had good feelings that Skyrim was coming, that NBA was coming, because that was in the reveal trailer, but all companies were like, yeah, just because you saw that doesn't mean it's coming. 
I remember that. Like, what do you mean? So we Wait. saw that much Skyrim, but Skyrim's not coming You're this right. much. Yeah, okay. You're right, okay. It's just Nintendo didn't want them to confirm anything. Um, <laughs> really weird. It's like, why would you show it off if you don't want them to confirm it? I didn't right. say you don't want them to talk about it, but at least say, yeah, it's coming to Switch. But why would you Why would you even show it if it's not even coming yeah. to Switch then? NBA 2K, not coming to Switch. Yeah, it's coming to Switch. And they're like, well, it could have been NBA Live, doubtful, but yeah. maybe because EA doesn't like Nintendo. Right. Um, But... I think uh, that that's the one thing is that we could be seeing a Nintendo Direct in January. Mm -hmm. So even though Kirby might be the only thing in other... Heck, maybe Kirby's coming out in when, January. When's Yoshi coming out? Don't know. TBD. Okay. I mean, next year sometime. But right, don't right. Know. Okay. Even if they squeeze Yoshi in there. Because it feels like Yoshi and Kirby are basically done. Right. At least because what we've seen looked like pretty complete game. Oh, right? yeah, for sure. So it's like, all right, those games are probably done, and they're just holding on to release them whenever they feel like it. Yeah, a little bit dead. Uh, Kirby, dead, we know for months. sure, is announced for early 2017, so that is going to be an early 2017 game. Mm -hmm. um, unless it gets delayed. Again, Nintendo does delay things at times. But those games, I don't think are going to get delayed. Right. I feel like they're going to have a direct, and that's when we're going to find out, okay, here's our slate. Here's when Wolfenstein 2 is coming out. Here is when we are having Fire, because there's Fire Emblem announced for next year. Uh, they're probably not going to talk about Pokemon yet. Not at that. That's something we'll have to wait for E3 if there's going to be Pokemon next year. Um, but I feel like that's when we're going to find out what other things do they have coming. Mm -hmm. What more exclusives? When's Octopath Traveler coming out? What, when's, when's these new games that we have announced? Do we have a new Mario Party coming to the game, the system? Do we have a new this? Do we have a new that? I don't know. Is there going to be more DLC for Zelda? This is the kind of stuff that gets announced then. and then smash. <laughs> they update their release site for 2018. Because right now, they don't really have much. In a, they showed like a, a timeline at one point showing off, oh, here's what we have coming in 2018. It was pretty sparse. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine because we're not at 2018 yet. Mm -hmm. But For sure. And we also have to remember they still have the Game Awards coming up. Uh, Nintendo, every year of the Game Awards so far has had some sort of major announcement at it. Granted, it's pretty much just all been Zelda. But... It can't really be Mario, because that's already out. <laughs> so if they have a major announcement this year, it can't be Xenoblade 2, because it's after that. So it, it's got to be something. Smash? <laughs> I mean, I, it would be pretty disappointing if after this whole year of we're advertising this to adults, we're advertising Switch to adults, they show up with uh, <laughs> with Kirby. You're like, okay, <laughs> yeah. the wrong audience for this, right, Nintendo. Right. I love Kirby, man, but wrong audience at the Game Awards. When you are handing out awards to Horizon Zero Dawn, Call of Duty, you got to have games that appeal to them. That's mm, yeah, might be a good time. I mean, I know it's probably way too early, but then again, they showed off Zelda back in 2014. They didn't release till now. If they want to pull something like that again, could we see Metroid Prime 4? Because hmm? that's the audience to show that game off. Oh, yeah, for sure. Even if it's just like a 30-second thing where it's clearly not coming out anytime yeah. soon. Just like... We're going to show you a cutscene, or we're going to show you, like, a very early first play of fighting an enemy or something. Um, I know, again, you could argue it's too early, but then if it's too early then, it's too, it's too early for us to know the game exists at all then. Yes. We have a logo. Show us a little we bit. Do. Just, yeah, just yeah. a tease. A tease. It could be two years away. Metroid fans will just be happy to have a tease. It's just a tip. <laughs> just a tip. Uh, and if that's not the case, you know, uh, Smash, obviously uh, revealing a Smash game there would be... I, I mean, I, that would probably be the biggest thing they I could know, do. I know Deluxe came out, but maybe even a new Mario Kart. I mean, it, that's... I don't think I don't know about that being the well, right, right. Like Mario Kart appeals to everyone, but I feel like their Smash is considered a more hardcore game. Right, true. Um, so Smash, that would be good, especially if they can include some, some key characters, even for franchises that maybe haven't released on Switch yet. Like, mm -hmm. what happens if they have the main character from Final Fantasy XV in it? Right. Or they have... Uh, you know, even... I mean, Sonic would probably be in it again, because Sonic Forces, Sonic uh, Mania. But... Because I always feel like they include characters. I mean, I, one thing that would be interesting, and this would have to be not necessarily Nintendo announcing it per se, but uh, in partnership with Square. One thing we didn't talk about in the last topic is uh, what if they announced that the Resident Seven, Resident Evil, not Resident Evil, sorry, Final Fantasy Seven HD remakes coming to Switch? Because hmm. again, right. you could argue maybe that game doesn't even exist at this point because it's that. <laughs> Again, Square Enix is just infamous for development issues with Final Fantasy for some reason. Yeah. It's just issue after issue. Now they're going to release it in chapters like the Telltale games, but then all that got delayed. Still don't know when it's coming. I mean, another huge announcement could be Kingdom Hearts 3 yeah. coming. I mean, Kingdom Hearts has been on Nintendo platforms before, so yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3 coming to Switch would just... Yeah. I know a lot of people would be happy. Even though, obviously, yes, it's not going to be max resolution. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, know. Yeah. Doom is the worst version of Doom. On Switch. We know. It's okay. Doesn't mean it's not fun. It, yeah, exactly. We understand that. Like, 
if they brought it to your phone, it's obviously the worst version of the game, but it's on your damn phone. You're right. That would be pretty impressive. So I would love to see Kingdom Hearts 3. Plus, I don't think it would have to see a lot of like FPS sacrifices. It would be more like resolution. Right. Um, maybe some, you know, the Toy Story world is not going to exactly look like it does in the movie mm-hmm. um, but, or exceed the movie as it appears as to him, which is pretty impressive. But yeah. maybe it will on a handheld. Like if you watch Toy Story, the movie, yeah. uh, like if they put it on Netflix and you watch it when Netflix ever releases on the platform, you watch a Netflix version of it, then you play the game. You might not notice the difference. Right. On that screen. Right. Um, anyways. Uh, but yeah, obviously, that's like stuff that I hope is going to happen before. Uh, you know, at the Game Awards, or mm-hmm. even, you know, I just think there's going to be a direction. I think it's going to ease a lot of this. Now, I did know before yeah. that I think third party games are going to kind of carry the way. Right. And I thought like that could be a huge focus of the direction. But look, we're, we don't have a lot of heavy hitters in the first half of 2018, but we have like two or three huge third party games hitting every month from now through summer, mm-hmm. um, whether it's old ports or brand new games. And that could very well carry the Switch based, right. based on the audience that's already built up. Right. Um, so we'll see. And again, this is going to be, I can't wait for the MPD report next month because this is a big month for Switch. Yeah. This is the we need to prove third parties can sell on Switch month. Because mm-hmm. when you have Doom, L.A. Noir, Skyrim, and I understand Skyrim's also getting another release. We're getting the VR version now. Not on Switch, huh. but that's coming oh, yeah. out this month too. Um, so we'll see how it could, hey, maybe perform better than the VR version. Um, so you have those three games plus Rocket League, which is yeah. relatively considered a big deal. Yeah. Um, by the way, for all the people, like, we don't want our microtransactions or our loot boxes. <laughs> Have you played Rocket League recently? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, everyone's like, oh, I don't want EA games because of microtransactions and loot boxes. I'm like, one, we already have microtransactions on Switch with certain games. And two, loot boxes are coming, too. So just just let you know, it's got, it, you, you might not want it. That's fine. Don't buy the games, I guess. But you're also going to... Here's the thing I have. Like, if you're going to be turned off from a game because of microtransactions and loot boxes, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But don't tell other people not to buy it. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I bought NBA 2K18 because I want NBA 2K games on the Switch. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's got microtransactions. No, I don't agree with it. I don't, I, I'll don't. i never spend a cent on it, but I want the game. Mm-hmm. So I want them. I want to purchase the game to support the idea of bringing it back next year and the year after and the year after. So it's like, not just because I, I want to play it, but also because I want this game to be here. Um, and you cannot support the microtransactions just like I don't, but I just won't purchase them. I, the game is still great without them. All right. That's what I like about NBA 2K. It's still a great game without the microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Rocket League, from what I hear, still great, even if you never spend another extra cent. So, right. and, but that's you don't have to support too. like like it's kind of like Jim, uh, Jim Sterling, who I brought up earlier. He does he hates pre order culture. Yeah. So what he'll do, uh, so his pre order doesn't count towards the numbers they like to tout heading into release for the Call of Duty. Like, this is the most pre order Call of Duty game in the history of Call of Duty. When it's like, oh, good God, you had like 8 million in pre-orders. That's yeah. awesome. And they'll announce that like a week before release. Jim Sterling will be like, yeah, I'll still pre-order to pre-install a digital version of the game or to like, you know, maybe get that exclusive DLC or something stupid. Yeah. But he'll do it like an hour before the game releases. So it doesn't actually count towards the pre-order numbers. <laughs> it just counts as a sale of the game. Like that's why it's like you can still enjoy the game and not mm-hmm. support the culture. Um, yeah. That's the thing. If you don't support microtransaction well, culture, like I don't think like Channel War, the loot yeah. boxes. Yeah. <sighs> and there's a fine line though too. It, mm. it, as long as you can play the game and have it be enjoyable without having to purchase them, that's where the balance has to come in. That's the thing. I feel like if you bought NBA 2K18 for my career mode, sorry, <laughs> that sucks. Because yeah. you, I'm not saying you can't do well in the game without spending money, but it's heavily skewed to the fact that you're 90% probability you're not going to do well in the game without spending money. Right. Um, if you just play it and want to progress your player, maybe you'll get to an 80 overall by the end. I don't know. But you want to get to the road to 99, <laughs> good luck without spending money. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter how many seasons you play through, it doesn't matter. Uh, or how many extra bonus curricular activities. Like, I don't even do any of the bonus stuff because I'm not interested. Like, this world they built, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in it. Yeah, right. I just want to play the games. Yeah. And make my star better. Practice, play games, practice, play games. That's all I care about. I don't care about the street games. Because guess what? If you are a player in the NBA, you're not allowed to actually do any of this stuff in real life. Yeah. It's in your contract. You can't do this stuff because it risks injury. Yeah. So while it's a game and it's not going to injure me, it's still like, this is... Not even that fun for me as just someone playing it, let alone is it actually allowed as an NBA player. So, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I, I have no interest in this doing it. This is an it. NBA street. So. I want to make a 99 NBA player, and NBA is like, okay, deck out my pad, buy some sick cars. You should. Why is there not an ability to go car shopping and just drive around in that stupid three-street area in a sick car? Like, why not? You know, It should basically be like a Cribs. Uh-huh. You know, that yeah. called my crib, yeah. but an Animal Crossing kind of like, here's your big, here's mansion, design your own mansion. Wasn't that part of 2K5? I don't remember. I think so. I remember there was something in there about I your crib, you a, yeah. getting like trophies yeah. and stuff yeah. you put in it. But anyway, oh yeah, you could used to be able to custom design your little man cave. Yeah. I remember that with the yeah. maybe a Packer lights and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but something like that, again, 2K, yeah. bring bring an NFL game to, to Nintendo. Just <laughs> tell them like, we yes. understand that EA is going to be mad. Do you really need EA? They pubbed you up before Switch came out, and then they said, yeah, we don't really know. We're probably not going to be there. Yeah, right. Um, if they don't want to support you, why support them? Exactly. Especially if you can create a lot of goodwill right. with a lot of people. If you're like, hey, look, we're going to bring the exclusive mm-hmm. you know, NFL game back. Um, if you don't want to do that, I guess get, get a hold of the people that make Quarterback Club or something. Although <laughs> 2K, I think, makes the most sense, especially since they're actually happy with the performance of games. Right. Um, so you have a good working partnership is basically what I'm saying. You already have a good working relationship. Go that route. I, I'm not worried, though, uh, about 2018 yet. Now, if we get to that Nintendo Direct, or Nintendo Direct just doesn't even happen. Yeah. So it's like one of these, let's get back to this again by the end of January and be like, okay. Yeah. Kirby's coming, Wolfenstein's coming, and uh, yeah. nothing till E3. That is, I think, what a lot of people are worried about. They blew their wad in 2017, and now it's going to be a, a six-month wait or so before it kicks back into gear again. And I hope that's not the case. Right. Because I think a lot of us, correct me if I'm wrong, Wii U and 3DS had huge long droughts. Mm-hmm. Wii U had a nine-month drought like after launch. Um, I know Lego City launched in there, uh, but again, wasn't exclusive. Well, it actually was exclusive at the time, but it wasn't a Nintendo game. Um, so we're talking even, and even after that, it was still like another five months before we saw another game, like an exclusive, like a good quality exclusive game. So, and that ended up being Pikmin 3. So the huge drought there, 3DS infamous for like its entire first year. The best game was Ocarina of Time 3D, which is a remake right. until Mario Kart 7 came out. Right. And, uh, Super Mario 3D Land. So like until those games came out, there was like nothing. So you have like six plus months of nothing on 3DS. Right. Um, with Pilot Wings, which wasn't very good on 3DS, and Ocarina of Time 3D, which was a remake. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay. So you had these long droughts, and the 3DS droughts got better after that. I think part of the reason I'm excited for Switch and why I set down my 3DS is the idea that it is a hybrid, right? Mm-hmm. Like Nintendo t- tells us it's a hybrid. They say it's a home console first, but it's a hybrid. Home console you can take on the go. And as a hybrid, I expect Nintendo's 100% effort of all their games on one platform. Mm-hmm. For so, sure. That's what I expect. Right. Nintendo's never told me that's going to happen. So, to be fair, it's Nintendo never... that inkling, though. No. I, I get the feeling, but yeah. Nintendo has never outright said, look, we're making all of our games for gaming platforms for Switch. They haven't said right. that. So, maybe that's why I just assumed there would never be... Never, never be a drought. Mm-hmm. Because... Why would there be? If they're making all... They've never, ever in the history of Nintendo made all their games for a single platform. They've had Game Boy around since shortly after the NES launch. So it's like, they've always been supporting two platforms. And they're still going to be, because they're still making mobile phone games. But in terms of their console games, they put them all on one system. Yeah, but mobile phone games are kind of... I don't... They're releasing two to three of them per year. No, no, I know. But that's not... I don't see it taking away a ton of... Causing a drought... No, I don't think. It, I, I think what they have is they have like one or two teams right. that make nothing but mobile games, right? And they're just going to keep those whereas, games mobile games. Whereas you know, like an actual other platform like the 3DS, that might cause a drought. I mean, think about it. Like Mario Kart, you could argue maybe there was two teams. I know for mm-hmm. sure there was two Zelda teams. Mm-hmm. One that made handheld games, one that made console. And you could just have them all work on one game at a time, or mm-hmm. make two games but for the same platform, right? Um, so I feel like there should be. Less reason, less excuse for there to ever be a drought of Nintendo content. Um, but again, we'll see. We don't know. I, I'm not worried yet because, again, if that I was worried then, um, then I needed to be worried last January until the event happened, and then boom, all your worries were gone. Yeah. Um, so after January, we'll re- I think we're going to revisit this time and be like, okay, how's the 2018 looking right now? Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. being a little worried heading into 2018, being like, okay, the, the first half of 2018 doesn't look like it has much. 
So we'll see what happens then. Uh, so we're going to go to our final topic then. And original topic three. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, well. Surprise, surprise. Pokemon oh, Ultra God. Sun and Moon have leaked. Kinda. And I'm putting the kinda here because I don't believe there's a playable ROM out yet. By the time you listen to this podcast, there might be a playable ROM out. Uh, but again, Pokemon, well, at the time of recording, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon doesn't come out for like a week and a half. Uh, so that, there's that. Um, and obviously we know Pokemon, I think it was Pokemon Moon leaked last year. Uh, we know Nintendo started cracking down after a, a, re- a re- leak of a re-release, remastering of like Mario plus Bowser's Kingdom, something, something, Saga, yeah. Luigi, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember. It's a game I, I, I played a bunch on DS, but I I, I honestly forget what it's called. So yeah. I, that doesn't mean I don't like it. It just wasn't a game that stuck with me in my mind as something uh, amazing. In fact, the other reason I even think about it now is because of Nintendo's response to that game leaking. Right. Uh, so it's leaked, kind of. Now, this is where, where we know that... Uh, so the full game hasn't leaked. You know, I do note that, as far as we're aware. Might be by the time you listen to this. But at the time, we're not working under the assumption that's happened. Won't be surprised. Because, mm-hmm. again, Moon leaked. But um, from what we're able to tell, from what I'm able to dissect out of all the research I've done... On where all these leaks are coming from, the leaks are coming from review copies of games rather than early the fell off the truck copies or whatever. Um, the leaks themselves, were, by the way, we're not going to go over any spoilers. We're, we're, ha- we're going to have a conversation on game leaks. Um, the leaks that they have so far include new Pokemon, uh, evolutions of some of those Pokemon, including like some ripped models, um, mm-hmm. a little bit of information on the story. Again, I didn't read the, read the stuff on the story. I just saw some some stuff about it, like. This is a post about some of the story, um, and blah, blah, blah. And all this info is coming through forums and other avenues uh, that are anonymous. And while you might think that, oh, maybe these leaks are fake, like, as an example, oh, if they release on 4chan, how do you know they're real? Uh, people in video game media that have copies of the game have said on Twitter, we hate to tell you guys this, but those leaks are real. Mm-hmm. So they're not leaking it, you know, certain outlets aren't leaking it themselves, but they're saying... They're confirming the leaks. No, they're saying that the leaks are, are a thing. Like someone out there, one or two people with review copies, are basically ruining it for everyone else. Um, again, the, we're not talking about a full game leak yet. Right. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Right. Um, and, and if it does happen like the day before release, someone could have just gotten an early copy, it happens. Uh, then you wouldn't really necessarily have to blame the media. But here's my thing. Since it appears these leaks are coming from someone in the media, whether it's a YouTuber or you know someone at a small site, or maybe it's even someone who works at a big publication. We don't know. Right. Because because of how the information is leaking, it's very hard to track it down. Because that might be why the game hasn't leaked yet itself, because Nintendo is able to track down who leaked the game, mm-hmm. or at least what outlet leaked the game. Right. Because um, they were able to do that last time, and yet they still punished everyone. Yeah, they punished everyone. But I'm sure the, the person that... themselves probably really got punished, even extra mm-hmm. in addition to. Like, we're never talking to you again. You're blacklisted from everything. I wouldn't even be surprised if they're like, yeah, you leaked the game, so like, if you make YouTube, because it came from a YouTuber, guess what? Any Nintendo video you put up that has any sort of footage, we're taken out. Yeah. I wouldn't even be surprised. Like, Nintendo needs to crack down hard. They no, haven't I'm, announced I'm, that, and that person no, probably can't say anything. I'm probably sure that any sort of Nintendo well, that, anything, if they mention Mario, well, the guy if they broke mention... The law. Yeah, the, right. the, the guy broke the NDA, broke the law. Yeah. He's not going to be able... He can't argue against Nintendo. He, he can't even make a big... Oh, Nintendo will never let me... Dude, you it illegally leaked a game. Guess what? Illegally leaked Guess what? We, we as gamers... jail. We as gamers don't feel sorry for you. Mm. And the thing is, I know some people... And here's the, here's the thing. For the people out there that were like, oh, but I wanted to play it early so I knew if I should buy it. They had a demo for the game. Yeah. This is one of the few Nintendo games there was actually a demo for. Right. The, that's the worst time to throw out that excuse. They didn't let <laughs> right. you try the game already. Yeah, right. Granted, like, we didn't like it, but still, so, <laughs> that was, they, that was they let, us. They let you try the demo. Like, and, and I do think Nintendo needs to have more demos. That's a topic for another day. Yes. Because um, I actually was going through, trying to figure out what games have had demos and what haven't, mm-hmm. and then have a, have a longer in-depth conversation. Because I feel like with Switch... Bringing in the audience or bringing in, I think, think demos are something to talk about. But right. does this bother you that we're... This happens with every game, by the way. This isn't exclusive to the Pokemon. Every game gets leaked. Mm-hmm. So, somehow, some way. Um, but the fact that we can kind of... Uh, are kind of getting the feeling that this is from the media again. Um, you know, I, I think if this was coming from... I think my, my opinion on this would be different if it was someone who just, like, copy fell off a truck or uh, some place broke street date. Versus, yeah, 
an actual member of the media that is under like these agreements to not say anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your right. thoughts on this? Oh God. It, Cause this is an ongoing conversation. That's just won't go away. I know I said this earlier, even before the podcast, but when the hell are people going to learn it? This is not, it, this isn't helping us. This is not helping gamers. I, you can make any argument. It's not it. These are just going to cause Nintendo to crack down even harder not even, not even just Nintendo, all gamer, uh, all game companies. So this is not helping gamers at all. This is hurting us terribly. It sucks. Th- this legit sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why Nintendo has cracked down like they have. Now, the crackdown apparently has loosened a little bit. It might have just been for a, a week or so. But they're still holding down. Um, I still haven't heard back well, from our representative on if we're going to get approved for the Ambassadors program now. It's funny because uh, last time we talked about this was when Wolf Den was on. Mm-hmm. He has now since heard back, and the reason he got rejected from the ambassador program because of his a, a specific tweet on, oh excuse me, a specific message he put up on Instagram. I didn't know Nintendo was going to dig that deep, but it basically they went through like his Twitter and his Instagram, and we're like. Ee! You're all a little, you have a couple of things that are unbecoming of one of our ambassadors, which is basically like he had a swear word in one, and then in another, which I don't have anything like that, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, maybe my personal Twitter might from way back when, and I hope they wouldn't hold that against me. Um, but whatever, maybe they will. It's Nintendo. It's you Nintendo. Know. They, I don't know how deep they're gonna dig. I don't have a lot of tweets, so like, yeah, I don't tweet very much. So yeah. then maybe I should. I think I actually went through and deleted one tweet off Nintendo Prime after he said that. I was like, hmm, yeah. Uh, and the other one was uh, some where he had like an image of him like wearing the Mario Odyssey hat or whatever, and and given the finger. Um, yeah. And I like I get that it's not brand friendly to Nintendo, but it's like yeah. but here's the thing: he's trying to advertise Nintendo stuff to his fan base. Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, but whatever, whatever it is, what it is. Nintendo doesn't want to associate with it. It, it is like it. When I heard that, I was like, but you're not like PewDiePie, okay? Like PewDiePie has done some bad things. Or, like, you know, some of these other big YouTubers have some, some pretty nasty stuff they've done. Right. You gave the finger on social media. Yeah. That yeah. probably hurts your prospects more of getting hired by other companies than it's going to hurt your audience or hurt Nintendo. Right. Like, just because you wore a Mario hat. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, but anyways, free advertising. Right. Um, I, I think that the, what sucks about all this is just... I don't know if it's going to have anything to do if we get rejected. We have not been rejected yet. Last I heard was we're still under, under consideration, um, which if they're going that in depth, I understand. They're going to go through every tweet. They're going to go through every single post I've made on Facebook, on the Nintendo Prime mm-hmm. Facebook. Um, they're going to go through every video on my channel. I, and I have a thousand plus videos, so mm-hmm. they're going to go through a lot of stuff. So I get it. Yeah, so I, it bothers me. They are. Here's the thing. I like leaks as a, as a, just someone who who's a fan. I, mm-hmm. I understand why fans like leaks. Why well, there's a lot of talk about these Pokemon and all this stuff. I get it. I understand the desire. We all want to know as much information as we can. And if you don't want to know as much information as we can, avoid anything that talks about Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Right. So it comes out. Right. Pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, you see a video that says, "Oh my gosh, story, new story details." Don't watch it. Yeah. Right. You don't have to go in the video, dislike it, and start complaining. Like, just don't watch that video. Yeah. There's people who do want to see that stuff. And I happen to be one of those people. I like, like, Leaks for Zelda. I, I like seeing this stuff at, from a consumer perspective because I enjoy Leaks. Right. But as a member of the media, and even as a consumer, I have to sit back and say, look, when the leaks are coming from the media, it's a problem. And it's been coming from the media forever. This isn't a new issue. It's very, very frustrating. Oh, yeah. I, and I'm not just saying this because I'm part of the media. Obviously, it affects me more directly because of that. But it ruins, I think, what Nintendo and other companies, in this case, Game Freak as well, uh, are trying to build up hype for a certain game uh, up to its release. It, as an example, what happens if Xenoblade Chronicles 2 gets the entire story leak before it comes out? A they said that Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which we just talked about last week about how they need to do a story trailer. <laughs> we got a story trailer. Mm-hmm. So that that's great. Um, and not only do we get a story trailer, they said in an interview, we want, this game is story driven. Nice. We did not go full open world because we have a story driven narrative. And it's okay. like, okay, okay. awesome. Yeah. That's, exa- that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Right. 
but here's the thing. If that entire story gets leaked beforehand, I have to sit there and be like, okay, I want to read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, because I need to play right. I need to play But I'm going to be like, but even as I'm like playing the game, I'll be like, okay, what happens next? Well, when I'm laying in bed tonight, I can look up the story. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to. Not like, granted, after the game right. comes out, that's going to happen anyways, but it, it's, that stuff can ruin things. And when story oh, details yeah. are coming out, um, the new Pokemon, I understand that that's a big deal in Pokemon, but it's, I don't really care about that. Right. Then you could you can reveal all Pokemon before release. I don't care about that. But like story details and all stuff, it's just you're ruining it for some people, admittedly, who do not want to see these story details. Not because we can't avoid them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we can, but there are going to be YouTubers and other people that are going to put headlines that have some of the details in that you're going to come across, or right. screenshots from the game that are going to come across that have details. Right. Like one of the big big issues that people have with Game Explain when they were doing all the Super Mario Odyssey coverage, and they didn't even break NDA, is that some of the images they used in their thumbnails contained spoilers. Whether it was like, oh, look at this new kingdom, and then they had a picture of the kingdom. It's like, you can't do that. Like You could say new kingdom, but for people who don't want to see that stuff, you can't put that kingdom in the thumbnail. Mm-hmm. Right, find a right. clever way to, yeah. to hide the kingdom in the thumbnail. I understand the thumbnail, you want to be more attractive, but save that for after the game release is fine. Right. But... Yeah, so it's it's just a lot of this just bothers me to no end. Just, just stop. Just yeah. just please just They're stop. They're not going to. They're not I, going I, to. I know, but and please. the thing is if you're gonna leak as a media member, what benefit is it to you if you're not using it to advance the, your outlet? Like if I had a copy of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and I want to leak the entire story right now on Nintendo Prime, I could do that. Nintendo's only just gonna never send me a review copy again. I'm gonna see a huge boost because that video is gonna get like a million views right. or more. Put your name behind. I'm gonna get make a ton of money potentially off of that right. video as well. Well, and no, you won't. It, it'll cause... be a one shot. No, Nintendo won't touch it because I just won't show any gameplay. Yeah. I can just tell the story. Yeah. So I'll screenshots. And I can tell read it. the story. <laughs> yeah, and I can make a whole bunch of money. One shot. Lose lose access. Nintendo will never want to work with me again. They'll never schedule E3 booth tours with me again. They'll never want anything to do with me again. But. At least I had a big advantage of one. I made a piss load of money. Right. And two, um, I potentially grew my channel a bunch, and it was up all the uh, like. I get that, but when you're doing this like behind the scenes, it's like why? You're not even giving an advantage to yourself. You're just hurting people. Right. If you're gonna leak, put your name behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get why you're not. You well, know, I, 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 lawsuits right. or whatever. But still, it's like, but, come on. But then, do, if you're just worried don't about, do it. if you're worried about that, then don't do it. It's there are very few people out there that get media copies of games now with Nintendo cracking down. Stop ruining it because there's going to be a day it's going to happen. Times like done, no nope. more review copies, and and, sure. and everyone's going to be like, well, should we be mad at them because their review embargo doesn't go up till the day of release? No, because they don't even let you get a game until the day of release. Right. No more anyway, copies. Folks, no anything. Yeah, that's going to do it for this week's podcast, episode thirty nine. A little shorter, but just two of us. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Nintendo Jeff from Nintendo Prime. This is his, Eric Moore. Hello. You can follow him, <laughs> aka Nintendo Prime, at Ninja Prime on Twitter. <laughs> follow myself at Nate Jans. Uh, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime, where you could just for $5 a month get this podcast early, $20 a month beyond the podcast, dollar a month get access to early Q&As, and like $3 a month, I think, is the video log. I don't know. Go check out the tiers, a whole bunch of stuff. Too much to go over right now. It's been fun. It's been real. Time to go watch my kids before my <laughs> wifey gets all maddy. She's already mad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have a good one. Peace out.